Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name is Ryan and another awesome indie creator on uh, this episode of Indie Creator Spotlight. I got John Burkett, fellow member of the Cartoonist Cafe of Ringside States group. Um, he's been doing Ghost Agents with uh, Rocco Jerome. He's been in all the other fan projects that they got going in that uh, group. And I'm super stoked to uh, finally have you on. I know we were supposed to do this when issue two of Ghost Agents was before it was on Kickstarter. And we have now done it after the second book's been delivered and the third one is live. So I'm super stoked to finally have you on, dude. Yeah, thanks so much, Ryan. Yeah, uh, that's okay. No problem at all. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm still relevant to the project, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, every sort of time I have somebody on for the first time, I always like to kind of hear their backstory in terms of, like, how you got into comic books as a fan. Well, I have to say, I, you know, I wasn't a big comic book collector growing up, and... um I think probably like I'm a child of the seventies. So my first exposure to superheroes and, and was probably through, well, it was through the movies and, and the live action TV shows. Like I remember seeing uh, the Christopher Reeve Superman in the theater. And it was probably one of my first movies that I saw and having it, you know, completely blow my mind. Um, and then also we had you know, the live action Hulk show. Um, and, and I think, I don't know if the Spider-Man, live action Spider-Man was a, was a weekly or just had like a couple of short run series, but I remember those shows like really leaving an impression on me. Um, and of course, like, I mean, you had so many, you know, toys and other things out there that I just, you know, naturally, you know, became a fan. But I, at the time, I mean, as a, as a little kid, I wasn't reading comic books. It wasn't probably until high school or junior high that I was actually collecting or reading any comics. I think my like my first memories of actually collecting comic book or comic related content would be um, Mad Magazine in right. the in the early 80s. Um, it's something that I you know I love that I shared with my father. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember being a fan. And I think that's probably also the first time I started thinking about um, you know, who these artists were, which was a revelation to me, you know, really picking up on or noticing different styles of illustration. You know, I was a huge fan of Mort Drucker, of course, because he did the movie parodies. Mm -hmm. uh, but also, um, of course, I, I'm spacing on his name right now. The guy that did the day in a life of or the, oh, God, I'll come back to it. Okay. But, but Jack Davis. Um, and just like all the, I, I gravitated toward that, you know, kind of zany, you know, wacky stuff and the, and the satire. So that was probably one of the first things I remember collecting out of subscription for a while, the Mad Magazine. And then after that, I think, you know, the, the first time, and actually this is a pretty interesting story. I didn't realize until recently that um, the first like legit comic book shop that I walked into it was a bookstore, a comic book store called um, Pegasus Books. And that was here in my hometown in Vancouver, Washington. That I used to go there to uh, get my Transformers comic books. So um, there was a big, of course, this is the way they got kids is there was always the toy yeah. comic book crossover, right? So if you were collecting the toys, if you're a fan of the toys, you know, you, you know, most likely could become easily a fan of the comics. So that was the first comic book I remember wanting to collect on a monthly basis was Transformers. And the store, um, Pegasus Books, was owned by uh, Mike Richardson. Okay. So Mike Richardson, the founder of Dark Horse, before he founded Dark Horse, had this comic book shop that I think he started in, in Oregon. And then he opened up a second, or this might have been the second or the third uh, branch of the store. Uh, in my hometown. So that was the first comic book shop I went to. And I remember buying comics from him. I didn't know who he was until, like I said, like recently, I was like, right. oh, wow, that's the guy I bought my comics from was, was uh, Mike Richardson. You know, that's my earliest memories of collecting comics. And I you know, I wasn't really like a big collector at all and, and really wasn't ever of, of the floppies. I mean, I think even to this day, I probably have, oh, uh, you know, one long box full of, of, wow. of comics. <laughs> All right. um, most of my collection now, and this is stuff, and most of it's been built up in the last few years mm -hmm. is trade paperbacks and, you know, library editions and all the, the fancier reprints that have been putting together. 
yeah, my connection with comics, um, and of course, in in junior high, uh, that's when I started like drawing, like trying to figure out how to draw comics. And I was a big fan of um, Robotech. So that was like um, the stories I was gravitating toward was this sort of Robotech storylines. And then I just, I put my friends in you know, as the characters. So in junior high, I, would, I was doing, you know, a few pages of Robotech comics, just in pencil and notebook paper um, mm. to try and figure out, you know, how to put together a comic and what panels were and that. I, I continued, you know, illustrating. Um, I was you know, on the newspaper staff as their staff cartoonist, which usually just meant like filling in the spaces. They they have yeah. so many articles, and there'd be these gaps, and so I had to come along and and put some little sketch or doodle on, you know, the day before we went to press to fill up the you know the dead space mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, and so is that when you is that when I'm sorry to interrupt, is that when no, you kind of like decided like that this is something you wanted to pursue or did you, was it just kind of something you did at more as like a hobby back then and it, yeah well I mean I I kind of went it's it's kind of a, a long story I, I mean I went back and forth with comics um but I I can't say that in you know junior high and high school I was drawing a lot and I was encouraged by my folks and you know I had a drawing table um I had books you know of course how to draw Carmux the Marvel way mm -hmm. was you know a book that you know I used to to try and figure out how to how to make comics um I was also researching the tools that artists use trying to figure out what a quill pen was and trying to figure out you know the right paper bristle board and and uh you know all the you know all the right tools that comic book artists would use I was trying to figure out how to how to use them and I was lucky enough in high school to have a couple of close friends who also you know, aspired to be well I, we I have to say we we weren't really we were doing it as a hobby and none of us were well I, one of one of the guys in our group was a little bit more I guess goal oriented or was able to complete stuff you know <laughs> better than we were mm -hmm. the other two of us um, I, I think it was fun to do, but, you know, I personally wasn't driven the way okay. that I think you would need to be to become professional at it. And I wasn't really thinking at that time that that might happen. Although there was a couple of situations where I guess the universe was trying to tell me that maybe this is something I should do. Um, one of them was, uh, I had the opportunity with the, the couple friends of mine. Um, we'd been putting together some pages, and and I had done a mutant animal story, <clears throat> of course, because one of the other comics that I really loved growing up was Ninja Turtles. I mean, that was my exposure to them <clears throat> in junior high and high school. Um, the the it was the first comics reprints that were in color that I think I got first. Oh, okay, but then I went back and started collecting what I could find in the in the bins and and have some of the 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 Mar uh, the Mirage run. I have the How to Draw Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the the Solston Solston Solston, oh, yeah. book, which was also a great resource. That was kind of my my uh, my inspiration for this uh, mutant story, mutant animal story that I was working on with a buddy of mine. Um, so this was this was early '90s. This was right during um, the image uh, explosion, and uh, the image guys were doing kind of this tour. I don't know if it was nationwide or they had a few uh, choice locations they were going to go to, but uh, we had the opportunity to go and meet on this one um, this one time. I think there were a couple of these image founder uh, events happening. Um, I think Todd McFarlane had his own day and maybe Rob, Rob uh, Liefeld had his own day. But then there was a day where like Wills Portacio, uh, Mark Silvestri and a couple others, I don't know if Eric Larson was at this one or not, um, were all on one day. And, and we went to that one and we had the opportunity to get our portfolios looked at. So uh, we Good went ball. up and asked, you know, we got some comics signed and. I asked if uh, they'd have some time to look over my portfolio and they said, yeah, yeah, just hang out for a little bit. We'll get through this line. And 
And you know, if you want to just stick around and, and we'll take a look and give you some feedback. So Will Spertaccio, um, was he was the one that was giving kind of the portfolio reviews as, as uh, Mark Silvestri was kind of off next to him looking over his shoulder mm -hmm. and would chime in with a, a couple of tidbits. But I remember Will Spertaccio um, kind of giving us or giving me um, sort of the, 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 uh, the standard, but, but very generous um, review, you know, of um, trying to make sure every page had one impact panel, you know, don't make sure, you know, don't try to make everything um, uh, an impact panel, make one that really pops, you know, and, and all the other um, advice they were giving. But I thought that was, you know, a, a really great uh, opportunity to get, I mean, that was my first, first ever review or or critique of any kind so yeah i think you know the the thing is though it wasn't it was shortly after um that after image that um that i kind of fell out i didn't collect anymore um i was thinking about college and uh enrolling in uh college art classes and unfortunately you know they really didn't encourage you know drawing from imagination at least at the foundation level mm. so and i think this happened to a lot of like would-be cartoonists you go to you know you go to college and and you take an art class and it's all you know drawing from observation um and some design stuff but comics at least you know back in those back in the 90s early 90s uh, you know there wasn't really a curriculum for it so uh so you kind of had to put that aside and and I did and it wasn't that I wasn't interested in doing fine art I was um you know and I I end up pursuing that but you know I just uh I just kind of feel, you know drawing comics kind of fell to the side as I as I kind of pursued what I was supposed to do with the um the classes I was enrolled in so yeah so from there how when how do you get back into comic books and then in turn what led you to like, to tell me what got you back into comics, right? And then I'm kind of curious, like, how did you find the group? And then in turn, like, decide to like, you're on all these like fan projects and stuff and teaming up with people in the group. Well, I, I went through a BFA program in painting. Um, and then from there, I moved on and got a master's in painting. Mm. Um, and I think it was in, well, it was in when I was a graduate student. Um, that I began thinking, or I guess missing um, the imagination and the storytelling uh, of comics, and I had and I had expressed this like there was there was one uh, uh, project in particular that we did as kind of a benchmark um, in the graduate program, and I remember that I drew a short, uh, it was like a four page comic strip and it, it was a comic that kind of um it was it was like a funny animal comic i, I drew myself as a mouse and I'd, I'd kind of expressed in this comic my it was kind of a frustration or a confusion that i was experiencing in grad school like mm -hmm. not knowing where i was going and and really longing for the the fun that i had used to have when i was drawing just for myself and i think a lot of people kind of go through that you know in grad school kind of a, a breakdown because there's you know you're 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 working so hard and you're you're under a lot of pressure and, and you just want to have some kind of a, a relief a release from that and that's what i did is i drew this comic and one of my uh fellow grad students and he uh said well you should you know check out what's going on in in comics now because you know there's a, there's a lot of sort of there's a lot of artists that have taken it to a fine art level and I think that for myself, that's kind of what I was looking for is some kind of a bridge, I guess, between comics and fine art, um, some way to, to reconcile the two. Mm -hmm. So we went to a comic shop uh, called Millionaire Picnic, which is a fantastic comic shop in Cambridge. And I was, this was in the early 2000s. And I was, you know, checking out, you know, things that I hadn't been exposed to in the 90s. I think you know, I, I hadn't known about books like Mouse or, you know, um, Zap or you know, I think I'd known about Robert Crumb, but I didn't really, you know, know what was going on that kind of was um, 
like the those that are working in that tradition contemporary mm -hmm. contemporary in, in the early 2000s um so i was looking at a lot of stuff that i hadn't looked at in the 90s I, you know I, um like i really was never a huge fan uh, i know this might sound kind of blasphemous but like i never was like a huge fan of comic book or superhero stories i guess like they never really connected too much with me when i was reading them i was mostly a fan of the art um and so you know, I really enjoyed looking at the artwork of someone like Todd McFarlane or Sam Keith or, you know, Mark Silvestri or, you know, uh, Mark Texiera. So, I, you know, I, I collected the comics for the art and the dynamism. Um, and I've, I've read the stories, but I, they didn't really connect with me so much. So I think that, you know, when I went back to the comic book shop when I was in grad school, um, I was able to find stories that, um, you know, kind of connected with me and uh, some personal narrative stories and things like that. Um, and, and other, I guess, other kind of off the wall stuff. And, and this was when, um, you know, like so I was exposed to um, Daniel Klaus and and, uh, and back then, of course, um, Blankets was a big hit. I love so, that book. Uh, yeah, I read through that and, and enjoyed it. What else? Um, Fred the Clown, Roger Langridge, like, just mm -hmm. I thought it was I thought it was genius it was hilarious but I mean the guy can he can illustrate comedic timing in a way that others just can't I mean you have to be able to show certain sequences in certain ways to really nail it and he does I mean Fred the Clown was was great I loved reading that book so anyway I was like I was it was a revelation to to be you know exposed to this stuff and I also at that time um uh discovered a uh, Scott McCloud's understanding comics and that to me was also like it was like the Rosetta Stone of you know it was like this is this is explaining the dynamics and the mechanics of comics but also breaking it down and revealing its potential um it, it doesn't have to be about superheroes if you don't want it to be it can be about anything you know, it can, and it has been about anything and other cultures are doing this. And um, so I really enjoyed that book so much so that um, as soon as I was um, graduated from grad school, I started devouring uh, these, you know, how to do books again and, and used understanding comics to um, put together a continuing ed class on how to make comics. So I did that for a couple of years. Granted though, I wasn't I wasn't making my own comics at this time I was still my studio practice was abstract painting I was still doing that um but I was helping other people uh, you know I just I still knew the the basics and I still right. knew you know how to put together a story and I could do it in a way that people that hadn't done before uh could learn something from my class but in retrospect, I kind of feel like, like a bit of a, you know, a bit of a phony because I wasn't, you know, I wasn't in the trenches making my own comics along with them. I was just helping them and doing my my own other thing in the studio. Uh, it took me a long time to actually get back into a practice of making comics, and that wasn't until um, 2019. Um, I first, well, I maybe a little bit earlier, 2018. I had a there's a local drink and draw group here that I met up with and um, I was still making abstract painting in my studio but I found myself doing more and more illustration um, I was running uh, a role-playing campaign that was sci-fi campaign I was illustrating characters from the sci-fi campaign that was running finding that in my own art making that I was doing more what would be a comic book or illustration type work. Uh, 2019, I stumbled across a video that was, uh, it was the, the, the cartoonist cafe video where they covered the, um, the article about Kevin Eastman and Tundra. I want to say it was from. Oh, it was the comics journal interview. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, what is this? Who are these guys that are, um, they're exploring all this. And so I went down that rabbit hole and started, you know, listening to more of the videos um, or watching other videos. And, and it was through that that I discovered the Facebook group. 
and just this incredible group of people that were inspired to um, make comics. I think that a call had already gone out to make the um, the Image Grand Design book, mm-hmm. and that was already underway by the time I connected up with with the group. They had made, I think they'd made Image Grand Design and Image Grand Disaster, right. um, and I thought that, you know, I mean, this is great. This is like, you know, the most incredible fan art ever. And, you know, this oh, is awesome, that yeah. was, really, it was fantastic. And so as soon as they put out the call, excuse me, for um, the uh, darkest image, I was like, sign me up. How do I, how do I get involved in this? Um, and it just kind of coincided with a point where I was feeling, um, you know, a, a bit more confident that I could, you know, I could probably put together a few pages of comic art and and be happy with it. So, the story that I worked on was it was great. Um, Kyle Pinion was a writer of it, and it's Jack Kirby's um, Phantom Force. Phantom Force, right? And uh, I think that maybe and and I'm not too familiar with one the other two books, the Grand Design and Grand Disaster, but I think in one of them maybe the um, what's the character's name ginseng character had been killed and so right. maybe that something happened in phantom force i don't know i don't have a, a lot of the the backstory knowledge on this but um kyle pinion had written the story that takes place after uh ginseng dies and he rolled it into this idea about um the bruce exploitation movement of the 1970s in hong kong action theater so um he developed this story I think it's a six page story that kind of explores this this mission that these potential next ginseng characters, um, you know, how how to determine who's going to be next in line. Um, So it was a lot of fun to work on. um, And I felt like I was getting my stride back with making comics. uh, And that's how I got kind of back into, you know, back into it. And it's been nonstop ever since that was like a year ago um, yeah and then since then i mean like you're working on your own stuff right you're working on a book called feral star which you sent me a few pages of which is awesome uh but ghost like i said ghost agents 2 just came out well just the kickstarter had ended a few months back but it's it's been delivered as of i think like a week or two ago i think everybody was starting to get their books um and you can get that i think can still get that on Cosmic Lion, I, I believe. Maybe number online. two is sold out. Oh, it yeah. is sold out now. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I know that there... the last copy is going out. I think number two had a shorter run than number um, one. They may still have issues of number one. I'm not sure. Okay. You have to uh, contact Eli or Rocco to find out. Yeah, I'll hit up Eli. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Rocco Jerome has gotten so many of you guys. Um, for issue one, issue two, now issue three is is fully backed on Kickstarter as of right now. Um, I'll drop the link down for anybody listening and watching. I think you can, like you said, two sold out, but maybe you can do one as an add-on. And it's an <laughs> anthology, and it's an anthology book, so you don't necessarily have to get. I mean, if you get one and three, you're going to get complete stories and all of it. But I really love what you did with it. The whole mystery science theater um, homage, kind of on the on the very first page, is so dope. Um, and you're doing. He brought you back for issue three, right? As well, yeah. you got on issue three. How did uh, how did that pairing happen? For- yeah. So um, it was while it was while Darkest Image was in production. I I don't know if I mean I must have posted some pages. Maybe Darkest Image had already been sent out, and Rocco reached out to me and said, "Hey, I'm working on this this book called Ghost Agents. You know, would you be interested in in uh, illustrating?" The story for me and I said yeah sure um so uh I didn't know a lot of I didn't know the backstory for ghost agents Rocco just said and this is what's great about Rocco he says well what do you you know what do you want to draw like what you know I think he realizes that you know if he can get an artist drawing what they want to draw they're going to have fun with it and he's going to tailor a story to your strengths so um I said well you know I kind of have this idea of like a like a trailer park in deep space you know just like this rundown um sort of you know uh space station um Mm. and so 
uh, I just wanted to draw kind of, you know, oddball characters and, um, you know, and, and, and sci-fi stuff. And, and he said, okay. And so he wrote this great story of like, you know, this, this heist, these, uh, these two characters who dwell on this rundown space station had the opportunity to, to lift this, um, to, to car jack or space jack or whatever this, this deluxe spaceship that has to uh, make an emergency landing at their space station. Um, so it's about, you know, their attempt to steal this, uh, this fancy spaceship. So um, we had a lot of fun with that, uh, introduced some new characters. And, and like I said, like, I didn't know that at the time that Ghost Agents was, you know, happening in the 60s and 70s, you know, on, on Earth. Um, so at the time, Rocco said, well, you know, it's kind of outside the, the storyline, but we'll make it work. So we kind of expanded the Ghost Agents universe with that story. So hopefully we'll see more sci-fi Ghost Agents in the future. Yeah, that was that was pretty dope. I I I also I opened. I'm like, wait, why is this in space? It was my first reaction too, but I totally dug the story. Like you said, it's it's an anthology, and each little you know vignette kind of paints a pic paints a picture of a larger uh, world or universe that's happening. So so it's a lot of fun, and yeah, I mean Rocco, he has a, he has a talent for pulling together some fantastic artists. Like everyone on this project is just stellar and I, I get inspired and and also you know pushed to do my best stuff by looking at what these guys are turning out and it's just amazing it's amazing stuff and what can we expect from uh your story in issue three can you give a little you know a little tease of what we can expect in that one yeah so there uh so believe it or not this kind of goes back to a, a bruce lee sort of homage storyline um i won't give away too much because i don't know how much uh Rocco would want me to share, but I will say that um, I think it's okay to share that this particular story, it's, I believe it's a two-part story. So I do the first part is uh, uh, Christian Misi uh, did the second part of the story, I, I believe. Um, so it's about this character, Lee, L-I, who's our Bruce Lee um, uh, surrogate, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, this story that I worked on kind of takes place after uh, Bruce Lee. Is it um, is it Game of Death? Which one is the one where he's on the island and he has to? Uh... I think it's Game of Death. Okay, I could um, be wrong. I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've. I mean, I have all of them, but I, I it's can't been a while. Either. Yeah. But it's it's the one where you know he just he's on the island and you know there was the big bloody fight at the end. Um, and he wants to recover from from that so he goes into a like a deep restorative meditative trance he goes back to his temple and through deep meditation he finds himself in what's called the netherworld and he finds there a creature called uh the key breaker or the chi breaker how do you pronounce that word chi chi breaker um who's kind of this beast that he has to do battle with so it's about them doing battle in the netherworld. That's um, awesome. It's kind of a manif it's the, the chi breaker is kind of a manifestation of his inner turmoil. So very cool. Well I, I'm super stoked. I, I was happy to see I think each issue has been fully backed faster than the previous one. Like issue two got backed faster than one and I think three was backed faster than issue two. So I'm super stoked for all you guys associated with the book and for Rocco and you know, like you said, like the talent he's corralling for this, it's, it's pretty awesome. Um, so yeah. I, uh, but let's uh, talk Feral Star. Can you tell everybody listening and watching um, a little bit about it? And what are your plans? I know you have a Patreon, which um, I'll, at the end of the video, we'll drop all your links. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about that and uh, what your goal is with that? Sure. Um, yeah, so Feral Star, I started drawing that um, actually, just before I jumped on to uh, Darkest Image, so I started that, um, you know, it was locked down during the pandemic. This was yeah, March, I think, of, of uh, actually, that, that reminds me, I have another story to tell about just what happened pre-pandemic. But um, I was encouraged to uh, start my own comic. Um, you know, I was getting back into things. I actually had had just started... Uh, my nine to five is working at our, our public library here in my hometown. And I was running a program, another comic book 
uh, workshop. And I thought, well, if I do it now, I, you know, I might as well um, start making my own comics so that this is legit this time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so I started writing the story, a uh, sci-fi story. And it's, it's about uh, just these, you know, it's a crew of um, this sort of ragtag crew of, uh, you know, freebooters who, who are just trying to, you know, make their way in the galaxy. And uh, it's kind of a mixture of everything I like about heavy metal and, uh, you know, Akira and, but also thrown in some kind of Dungeons and Dragons. Because mm -hmm. uh, the initial inspiration for this was actually a sci-fi role-playing game that I was leading uh, for a few friends of mine. And so we kind of have, you know, the storyline kind of takes on that sort of uh, adventure, um, you know, monster fighter, but also just, you know, trying to scrape by and, and, and make a, a space buck here and there and, and make sure your, your own uh, spaceship doesn't break down. And um, so I'm, I don't have like uh, a start to finish story in mind for it. I have a couple like vignettes I want to explore. Um, but I just want to have a good time with it and, and, uh, and see where it goes. But yeah, I posted the first six pages on my Patreon. Um, and at this point, I think I have about 16 or 18 pages. So I'll be posting regularly and, and having that, that deadline of every week or every couple of weeks, um, is, is what's going to keep me involved in the project. So I'm looking forward to expanding that universe. Awesome. Are any plans to put it in print? Have you thought about that? Maybe doing it yourself, um, like selling yourself, maybe Kickstarter, crowdfunding, any, uh, any idea about that? Yeah. I mean, right now the, the online comic, um, I'm putting up for free. I mean, it's on my Patreon, but it's the comic itself is free. Um, but you know, do, if you like it, please feel, you know, feel free to, uh, to throw a couple bucks my way. There's going to be exclusive content on the Patreon behind the scenes stuff, other illustrations I'm working on process, process drawings, process videos, things like that. Um, but the comic itself uh, is going to be free for anyone that wants to visit my page. And I think that at some point when I get to a certain page count, whether it's, you know, 20 pages, 40 pages, um, I would like to do a print version. In the back of my mind, I'm thinking right now, I'll do a small um, DIY zine. Because uh, I think what's Im most important for me right now is just to get eyes on the project mm -hmm. and to generate a fan base for it. Because um, I think that in order to have a successful Kickstarter, I think having a you know a group of fans or a group that supports the work and is already familiar with it is is a big bonus right. um, toward raising the the funds to create a you know a, a good book. So having it for free on my page where I can get a lot of eyes on it, and uh, in the short term, um, printing off um, and just some some small you know mini comic versions of the stories, um, and you know charge just a couple bucks for him to get it out there is the goal. And then okay. once I feel like I have, feel like I've got enough people who who seem interested in it or are fans, then I'll go for the Kickstarter. Um, but right. I think I'd like to have, I'd like to have a little bit bigger, bigger page count before I go that route, you know. Okay, cool. I mean, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm all about reading it in print. So I'm, I'm excited to see what you do with the book. Uh, besides, besides that stuff and you know, Ghost Agents, which is not yet released, but still live on Kickstarter as of now. Um, do you have anything else in the works that you're working on that you can talk about? Well, yeah, Rocco and I are talking about a story for uh, issue four of Ghost Agents. So I think he's writing that right now. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll probably be seeing that. Uh, I'm not sure what the time frame is now, but okay. um, we'll, announce, we'll announce it when it's ready to go, of course. All right, cool. Um, yeah, and that's been the great thing about these campaigns, and you may have already mentioned it, but it's, um, you know, these these books, we don't run a Kickstarter until we have all the artwork. I mean, until we know we've got a book. Um, so if you're um, signing up for the Kickstarter, you know, all we need to do is raise the money because the book's already made. The book's going to get printed. You just need the money to print it. Um, so, and then as soon as one book is out the door, and you're you're getting it in your hands. The next Kickstarter is going, so it's fresh in your mind. You know, if, when as two it was arriving in people's homes, that's when we launched the Kickstarter for number three. 
So, and that's going to be, that's live now. It's going to be uh, going until June 8th. I think, you know, we've already met our goal, so it's going to happen. So right now it's just raising money so that the artists and everybody can get a little extra money in their pockets. So please go out and support us and, and uh, let us know you like us. The, um, so I think we're at four grand right now, something right like that. The last campaign, I think we raised seven grand. So if we can, if we can break the, the seven grand and maybe get it up to eight, eight grand for this campaign, that'd be fantastic. Yeah, well, I definitely think you guys deserve it. Like I said, um, I loved I loved the first one. The second one, I liked it even more. I can't wait to to check out the third one. So everybody listening and watching, make sure you click the link below for the Kickstarter. I'll have it for you guys. And uh, go back, Ghost Agents Issue 3. Before I let you go, um, I want to thank you again for, for coming on the show, talking comics with me. Uh, just maybe share a few recommendations for everybody listening and watching. And then after... After that, uh, tell everybody where we can find you online. Sure. Um, yeah, I just kind of grabbed a, a pile real quick. I mean, we were talking about this earlier, just, you know, the, the kayfabe effect and yeah. how, like, <laughs> our pocketbooks are taking a big hit yep. from just all the books that we need to have in our collection. I mean, I've been collecting um, trade paperbacks and, and library editions and artist editions, things I didn't even know about. A couple of years ago, you know, um, and now I have no more bookshelf space because of all these things. Yeah, first of all, I want to plug a couple of my, my buddies here. We've got uh, Sam J. Royale. Sam yep. J. Royale's Deshume, fantastic book. This guy has got major talent. I mean, I don't know if you've seen his colored pencils and painting. Oh, and yeah, I have book. the book, yeah. And then Chris Anderson's book. I got this. This is his, uh, his He Man bootleg. Mm -hmm. um, this was something that he sent out to his Patreon followers to go follow Chris Anderson on his Patreon. He sends out free stuff or patron stuff. Yeah. Um, so those are the recent um, indie creator things that I've gotten. But this is some of the stuff that's on my on my to read list or halfway read list. Of course, this is this is like you know a standard. Everyone should go out and get this if they. I, I mean, agree. It's reasonably priced. It's definitely a you know a large meal. I think I'm you know I'm only like. I couldn't put it Almost down when I got it. Through. Yeah. But fantastic. I'm always learning about new artists. I mean, and it, there's just too much. There's too much stuff. But um, another discovery are the the, um, the Breccias. Is this, I was saying, is this image correct for you? It's backwards for me. No, it's it's correct for me. I'm just, okay. I've never seen that. That's pretty cool. Or so Cinder. Cinder. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is just oh yeah incredible artwork um and i can't remember if alberto and enrique are father son or or uncle nephew but you know this is amazing mm. of course this yeah. book is all in um it's either spanish or italian i can't remember but i bought it just because i saw you know a couple of recommendations online and just the, the illustration blew me away the series I'm currently reading right now is Grim Jack, um, which is incredible. Fun. I'm a huge fan of Tim Truman going way back to when he was illustrating for like D and D books, right? Mm -hmm. um, and of course, his his work on this is incredible. Um, this was a book that I went through recently. Just um, you know, the Doctor Strange. I'd nice. never read Doctor Strange until like a few months ago, okay. and this collection was recommended to me. This is the um, uh, Doctor Strange, a separate reality. So this has some amazing stories in it, and it's got the you know, incredible artwork. Yeah, Gene Colan, um, Engelhart, Broner, all nice. the best stuff. Of course, I've also been on a big Jule kick. The Lone Sloan books. I've got just about all of them now. I think and they're this large format. Just yeah, this is you know this is the you know the metal Erlans stuff oh yeah very cool just incredible um and this i mean these are the guys that you know inspired other artists that i like like you know, simon bisley is a big um oh, yeah, I love bisley. bisley and corbin and all those guys um yeah so i mean <laughs> i could give you a tour of my my library <laughs> but you know 
Uh, dude, definitely. Thank you for the recommendation. I mean, some of that stuff I've checked out, some of them I haven't. So I'm, I'm definitely uh, going to have to add more stuff to my list. Um, so like I said, thank you again for doing this. And for everybody listening and watching, can you tell them where they can find you online? And I'm going to put those links down below for you. Yeah. And I was going to say, um, if we have time, I was going to tell one more story. Um, do we got a couple of minutes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, in my hometown here, we have a comic book shop called I Like Comics. And this was right before, uh, before lockdown. This was uh, February of 2020. And the owner of that comic book shop, I think he, he, um, you know, he has a lot of connections in the comic book world. And he invited the image founders um, to come and do a signing at his shop. This was uh, in, um, Mark Silvestri, uh, Tom McFarlane, um, uh, Jim, Lars Jim Larson. Um, Jim Valentino. Uh, Jim Valentino, Eric Larson, um, and S Stevenson. What's his first name? Eric Stevenson. Eric Stevenson and uh, the walking dead guy. Robert, Robert Kirkman. <laughs> Kirkman. Yeah. They all came to the store. Um, and there was probably a thousand people came out for the signing. I have to say it was incredibly well organized. They had like a line meandering through the whole shop. Everyone had pre got a, had got a ticket beforehand. I mean, it was free, but you had to come get a ticket so you know where to stand in line. Um, and at one point, um uh Tom McFarlane starts walking through the line and and you know saying hey how's it going and shaking hands and stuff like that um and he's coming down the line and I'm thinking you know and he's he's he'd shake someone's hand and say hi and say how's it going one or two words and in my mind I'm thinking okay I gotta I gotta ask him a question you know because I never had the opportunity back in the day to to pick his brain and or you know or meet him and because I had sort of, you know, given up on comics when, when things were exploding for image. Mm -hmm. um, and so he's coming down line and I said, hey, Todd, uh, you know, what advice do you have for, you know, a, a guy who's a little bit older, but he's trying to break into comics. And because um, I'm, I'm in my late 40s, right? It's like, I'm not a spring chicken. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not in my 20s anymore. So I can't do all-nighters just working on comic book pages. Um, and I'm thinking, okay, well, he'll, he'll give me two or three words and, and move along. And he proceeded to give me like, like a five minute, you know, talk about, um, you know, advocating for yourself and, and, uh, you know, continue to push it. And, and, you know, no one's, no one's going to fight for you except for you. And um, so you got to be your own, you know, best self promoter. And he had, you know, all these, uh, you know, uh, sort of pep talk uh, things that he was given, uh, and it was really great to get that from from Todd himself. Thinking that yeah. he was only gonna he was only gonna give me like you know a couple of words. He was gonna be this long long talk. Of course, at that point, everyone started gathering around. You know, the, the line started collapsing on itself, and everyone's listening to, to Todd deliver the talk. You know, so yeah. um, in in true Todd McFarlane fashion. But anyway, um, That's yeah, awesome. that was my Todd McFarlane story. Um, yeah, so people can find me. Uh, I'm on Instagram at John Burkett Studio. Uh, I'm on Facebook, John Burkett. Um, I think there's probably a couple of us out there, but I think you can find me. Uh, Patreon, so it's www.patreon.com forward slash John Burkett. Um, and you won't find me if you just search my name on their site because I've marked it for um, over 18 content. So you have to type in the whole thing. Um, and I'm infrequently on Twitter at uh, Sublime Cartoon. So okay. that's where you can find me. Yeah, awesome. of course. Yeah, get out there and support our current uh, Kickstarter for Ghost Agents. Got my, my shirt on, which you can't see because I don't have my camera close yeah. enough for play. But uh, anyway. All right, cool, man. Well, like I said, thanks again for, for the chat. Everybody listening and watching, hit those links down below. Go back to Kickstarter. And check out all John's stuff, Patreon, all that good, uh, all that good stuff. And um, dude, I definitely would love to have you on again in the future when uh, you're ready to launch Feral Star. Absolutely, thanks so much, Ryan. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, man, have a good one. Okay, you too.